Welcome to Living History. My name is Anne Alfonso and I'm the principal of Bethke Elementary School. Our topic today is Dr. Paul Bethke and the new elementary school in Poudre School District, Bethke Elementary School. I'm joined here today by some friends who I will have introduce themselves. I'm Maddie Reiber. I'm in fifth grade. I'm Megan Retberg and I'm in fifth grade. I'm Bonnie Stegner and I'm Paul Bethke's third daughter. I'm Bill Bethke and I'm uh, Paul Bethke's one of his sons. Thank you for joining me today as we look back on Dr. Paul Bethke and talk about education then and today. First of all, tell us a little bit about Dr. Paul Bethke. Well, um, Paul was born, I was thinking about it, 96 years ago, almost 100 years ago, uh, in 1912 in a little town called Stuttgart, Kansas, uh, that had actually been founded by his grandfather who had homesteaded in the area. That's in western Kansas. Uh, he was born in, in a house there. Uh, they didn't, uh, didn't go to a hospital in those days. Grew up in Kansas and in Nebraska, went to high school in Nebraska, and really wanted to be a teacher, uh, always wanted to be a teacher. But when he graduated from high school, it was 1930, and it was the Great Depression, and it was very difficult for people to find jobs and, and work. And he spent some time really struggling to, to figure out what he would do, and he ended up uh, going to school in Greeley, uh, what's now the University of Northern Colorado, and uh, working as a ranger in Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, got a degree that would allow him to teach and started teaching in small schools in Larimer and Weld County, uh, including uh, the school in Timnath. He actually became a superintendent in Timnath after World War II and was there for a number of years, then superintendent in Laporte, uh, then went to work in the State Department of Education and after that worked for the Colorado Department of Education. Spent uh, uh, over 50 years working uh, in, uh, in education. Wow. What did he enjoy about being a teacher? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, he, uh, he certainly was always somebody who, uh, who got along with people. He was what you call a rock hunter. He loved to tell stories. He was great at talking to people. Uh, and uh, he, he just had a, a, a real enjoyment, I think, in watching people, watching young people grow and in imparting things to them. Uh, he loved sports uh, and, uh, and was always active both on the, on the physical education or, or athletic side and, and also on the, uh, on the academic side. He was very skilled in math and uh, that was something that he took with him into administration and when he worked for the State Department and for the, uh, for the teachers union, he was as a finance specialist uh, because of his skills in math. And I would add that he, he really loved children and young people. He really enjoyed, and he believed so in their potential. And um, he just believed in the community needing to support the system that would allow young people to achieve their potential. And, um, and that meant supporting teachers so they could, uh, you know, had the uh, education, the training, the equipment, and what they needed to really work with those young people. And uh, he just felt that public education was the, um, really the backbone of our society. It's, you know, for a democratic society to succeed, we needed to have uh, a public education and have everyone have the opportunity. And he was very dedicated to that. Girls, do you have some questions about education back then? Um, what kind of like tools did you use to do like math and science and things like that? Well, uh, slide rules uh, was one thing that occurs to me. You know, you don't see them very much anymore. But uh, a lot of a lot of math skills, instead of being done, we didn't have calculators. Uh, certainly, Dad didn't ever have them <laughs> until he was, uh, you know, you know, well advanced in his career. We didn't have them in school when we were in school. Um, but you learn to use something called a slide rule for certain kinds of calculations. Yeah. Um, I was going to say pencil and paper. <laughs> the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. <laughs> and the chalkboard. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, how many grades were there in your school at a time? Well, we should talk about this uh, probably separately. Bonnie, uh, you went to school in Timnath. Tim you started in Timnath. I was I went to school in Timnath from first grade through fourth grade, and uh, there were eleven students in my combined class. Um, the the third and fourth grade were combined, and there were eleven students. 
um, they, they were very small. There were three girls, and we didn't have a kindergarten, and so we started in first grade. And uh, that was one thing that was very interesting about that time. When I shifted, when we moved, and I went from Timnath to Laporte, I went from a class, a third, fourth grade class of 11 to a fifth grade class of 50. Wow. Oh. Uh, that was the time there was a big cement plant, and uh, there was a lot of activity out in that area. And I was just so kind of overwhelmed uh, and that showed how different it was, too, in a geographical area that was very close together. You know, to go from such a small class size to such a very large classroom, one teacher and one aide. And, um, but there were a lot of school districts and a lot of um, schools in this area, a lot of different little individual schools, and so it was very different from school to school. But, uh, but one of the big differences, I think, like for you now, is there certainly wasn't any preschool and there wasn't even kindergarten. And so. A couple of things. Um, first of all, when, when, uh, when Paul went to start teaching, the first school he taught in was first grade through eighth grade all in one classroom. So it was a, a true one-room schoolhouse and he would get people you know, the older kids working on their assignments, then work with the younger kids, sometimes have the older kids working with the younger kids, but he had to deal with all eight grades in one classroom. When I started school in Laporte, there was still no kindergarten. Um, and first through third grade, it was each individual classrooms. They were pretty large, 25, 30 kids, I'm sure. When we got to fourth grade, they started something new and were giving uh, fourth through sixth grade uh, we had a homeroom most of the day, but then we'd have a separate classroom with a separate teacher for math and for science. And so we rotated among a group of three or four teachers for those three years. And then, and then junior high started in seventh grade. How many years did um, Paul Bethke work, um, teach? How many years did he teach? Well, I've never added them up, but it would have started in the uh, mid-30s and run into the well, it would have run into the 50s, because even when he was superintendent in Timnath, he was still teaching classes. So probably 20 or a little more than 20 years of just teaching. And then even when he went to work with the State Department, he would still teach college classes occasionally. He would go teach school finance and things like that. So he taught off and on for probably 30 or 40 years. Uh, Full-time teaching was probably more like 20. And that's another thing that was really different. Um, when he he was the, I guess, I'm not sure if they called him principal or superintendent of Harmony School. And the building still stands and is still a school. It's a private school now uh, on Harmony. But when he was there, he was the administrator. He taught math. He was the coach, uh, I think, for all of the men's uh, sports. Uh, he was at least a relief bus driver, I think, sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and, and a relief janitor. And, you know, they're just, there weren't that many people on board, yeah. so you did what you needed to do. And if a teacher was sick, then he was the substitute teacher that day. So you got to wear a lot of hats. Bonnie, what are some of your fond, fondest memories of your dad? Um, well, I, I think his smile and um, his kindness. I mean, uh, even in a difficult situation, when you were afraid he was going to be angry about something, um, usually the first reaction was that he would be rather amused. And, uh, and I've told you this story is he'd want everybody to be calm and, and we always said he was still in the water. That's, there's got to be a better way. And the hands were going back and forth like this, so we said they were calming the water. And uh, so he always wanted to, um, we were supposed to discuss, not argue. Um, that doesn't mean we always did, but, um, and he, he always, uh, I think those are some of my really uh, fondest memory was his kindness, his just genuine kindness, for, you know, toward, uh, toward me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I have one distinct memory as a child of getting in trouble for something. I have no idea what it was. I have no idea what it was, but I remember that dad got really unhappy with me. So if, if dad got unhappy, then I knew, it, you know, I must have really violated some rule. Because <laughs> I just don't remember him uh, 
uh, you know, I can remember him being disappointed or, or uh, you know, encouraging me to consider something different than what I was hoping to do. But uh, it was always a, a discussion, and and he was always trying to have everybody see all sides of an issue. There was just a genuine, deep kindness about him, and uh, so and his enjoyment of the grandchildren too. It was just that was. Uh, when we grew up and started having children, just seeing how much Dad enjoyed the grandchildren and spending time with them and, and talking with them. Those are some of my... And then I have some other fond memories, too, of Dad's uh, attempts at um, being a mechanic and things like that. There were some things he wasn't too good at, but he really tried hard. He was from the big, get a big hammer school. Yeah, you know, get a big hammer. Couldn't solve anything. You could yeah. always apply more force. Right, <laughs> twist it a little harder or, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so sometimes he gave us reason to be amused in that department. <laughs> Bill, what are some of your fondest memories? Of your uh, well, I was thinking about, uh, you know, when I was still pretty young, he started working in Denver, and at first he was commuting. It was a longer drive than it is now, and he was commuting weekly, so he would leave early Monday morning, come back Friday afternoon. And one of the things he made a point of doing was uh, when he would go on a trip somewhere around the state to go talk to a school district about finance issues, he'd take me with him. Um, and when Rick got older, he'd take both of mm -hmm. us. And so I, I think back to those trips, you know, going, that's my introduction to Mesa Verde and to, uh, you know, the sand dunes and all the places you think about in Colorado that you might go on a vacation. Uh, I went with him on those, on those business trips, as, as it were. So. It was, it was something he, you know, he thought of a way to, uh, to uh, try to make up for the fact that he was gone a lot. Yeah. What is it you would want people to know most about your dad? Well, I think we've already talked about sort of his, uh, you know, his sort of complete devotion to the idea of public education. And at the same time, uh, he, was, uh, he was never somebody who wouldn't hear criticism or who wouldn't listen to new ideas or new ways of doing things. Uh, you know, he, he realized that you needed to include everybody in the discussion of, of how the system ought to work um, and, and be open to that kind of thing. But, you know, he, he very consistently through his life and through many different roles, what he wanted was a good place for young people to, uh, to learn and to grow up and to figure out how to deal with each other. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and to be able to take the best that their, their parents and, and the adults around them had and, and, uh, and improve on it and move forward. And I think one, of, one component of that was he had a real passion for trying to encourage people to go into education. Mm -hmm. Because uh, recruiting people. Yeah. yeah. He, it, you know, in some, at some level, he just felt it was one of the the highest and best callings, and, and uh, he wanted to see talented people in there, and so he wanted to work for um, teachers to be uh, compensated and uh, supported the way they needed to be, and he wanted to help bring the best and brightest into, into the system. Now, with the devotion that he had to education, there had to have been some funny moments. What are some funny stories that you have of your dad in teaching or being an administrator? One thing that occurs to me is that uh, I, I think it came as much from dad as from mom, but we always had, uh, we always had dogs. Um, and, you know, it was just something that that was just a big part of the family. Every, you know, everybody was involved with the, with the animals and we, and we always had this devotion to dogs and vice versa. And there was a dog that I knew a little bit, but that you knew much better, uh, Laddie who was a, a rough collie who actually was kind of part of the community in Timnath uh, and probably was in the school quite a bit. Laddie um, was kind of became a town mascot <laughs> and he would make the rounds. He'd come up our little street and go down and it was uh, um, the Thayer Garage and you know, I can't remember what the name of the grocery store. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> the little grocery store. And he'd go around and, you know, they'd actually like save a, a, a meat bone for him and that kind of thing. And we'd actually get calls in the morning if Laddie didn't make his little rounds in downtown Timnath, uh, checking to see if Laddie was okay. 
We had Laddie for 17 years. He was born on my grandma's farm. And so we had him as soon as he was old enough to leave his mom. And we had him for 17 years. And he was uh, an amazing animal. And he would, he was kind of a school mascot too. He'd go to the track meets. And I think sometimes he was up in the office with dad. And uh, so, and I was told that when the town of Timnath <laughs> wrote their first bylaws, they did write a leash law in there, and they put in, in with the exception of Laddie Bethke. <laughs> so now I, I can't you know, swear that that's true. I should have, try and check it out, but that's what I was told. So, um, but that was one uh, interesting story about uh, Timnath, I guess more than teaching. But uh, uh, Dad had a lot of, I know we had a, a stream of often his um, football or basketball or track uh, students uh, in and out of our house, sometimes for, for meals. And in one case, uh, the family was moving and the young man really wanted to stay and finish his senior year, so he lived with us and uh, finished his senior year in Johnstown. Well, I, I was wasn't there yet. It was my mom and dad and my sisters at that point because I was born a year before we left Johnstown. But, um, but we would run into um, people and they'd come up and start telling us these stories, you know, about uh, the time they had spent with the family or different things like that. Um, not exactly a teaching story. I know that my oldest sister, Jean, didn't sleep very well as a baby and that's when dad was at Harmony. And he said a lot of times when the farmers, the way he could get her to sleep at night is he'd go out and drive in the old car up and down the farm roads, and she'd fall asleep in the car. And so the next day when the kids were coming to school, a parent would come in and say, your baby had a rough night last night. <laughs> I heard your car out there. You know, how are things going? So uh, I think that one of the things about then, there was a lot of sense of community, um, which was a really nice, nice thing people you know, taking care of each other and aware of what was going, for better or for worse, what was going on in each other's lives. Yeah. Um, and the town of Timoth also gave our family tremendous support when my sister had polio. And she spoke about that at the dedication. One thing she didn't mention, which I remember, we never knew who organized it, but Jean was allowed to come back home after a long stint uh, in children's in Denver on the condition that she had to go to therapy every day. But she had to be transported, laying down, and had to be uh, carried to the car, carried back from the car. And uh, someone would appear at the door when it was time for Jean to leave and would help mom get her in the car. And when they saw her, the car coming back down the, through Timnath, um, there would be one or two individuals would show up at the house to help get Jean back in the house. Mm. And just as a community, they organized and helped so much during that time. So, well, it's been so interesting listening to the stories from back then. What questions do you have for the girls about education now? Well, you're in a new school. Uh, what's what's different about Bethke Elementary, the month or six weeks or whatever it's been that you've had there from from your previous school? Um. Well, we have like um, more like smart boards and stuff like that. And we have more technology than they did in Timnath. We have like keyboards and stuff like that. I think Timnath was, it was really big. And sometimes it didn't seem like everyone wanted to be together and wanted to like just combine and be one school. Sometimes it felt like we weren't always like a big community together. And I think at Bethke it feels really welcome and like that everyone can just feel that um, it's very welcome and everyone has a chance to be there. So technology? I don't smaller. even know what a smart board is. <laughs> <laughs> what is You're a smart board? You're going to have to show me. Have to come I've look. heard of smart boards. But. Um, they're like a board, but it, you can move it and you can connect it to a um, computer and, they, and you can like draw on it, but um, it's not like like um, with real markers, you just write on the board with like fake markers. Well, I think you're very, very lucky. Yes, yes. we are very, very lucky. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
What other questions do you have for the girls about education nowadays? Both of you went to Timnath before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I understand, is, is Bethke now a core knowledge school? We are a core knowledge school. Mm -hmm. And is that a change? Is that different from what Timnath was doing? It is a different sequence of a curriculum. So there are some topics that they are studying that wouldn't typically be studied in fifth grade. Right. So mm -hmm. both of you are jumping in. Have you noticed that, the, that what you're learning seems different? Or that it, in, in what way would you, how would you characterize it? Um, well, sometimes, like Timnath, they are, um, they learn something before us or we learn something before them. Like, because this year we're learning about factors. And um, last year we learned about factors in Timnath, but we usually didn't talk about them that much if they were older in Timnath. Okay, so this, Sequence go ahead, difference. sequence a little different. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, I think at Bethke then, if you have more of a chance to learn, it's a lot harder and easier at the same time. Like, you can be really struggling, but it can be really fun for you because they make everything, like, explained very, explained very well, and everything is, like, just laid out, and you can see and hear and learn very easily, mm -hmm. so. And they also take uh, a couple more like they take a lot more time for us to learn it because like in Timnith they would rush from one subject to another and I didn't have a lot of time to like comprehend all of it when they were teaching it. Am mm -hmm. I sensing that part of the difference maybe is class sizes and student teacher ratio now that different now teachers. that you got to mm -hmm. divide down both schools mm -hmm. have. Do you have a different kind of schedule? It sounds like you're doing, are you doing longer blocks or anything? I'm not sure what the schedule was at Timnath, okay. but I think what the girls are experiencing is a high quality staff and teachers that really care about their kids and make sure that they learn. I'm curious what you girls think of the building itself. Did you get lost? Um, What's your favorite part of the building? Well, I went to Bacon before Timnath, okay. so, and Beth Key looks exactly like Bacon in the inside. Okay. So I was, I could go anywhere I wanted to without being lost, and it was, really fun for me because I was like, oh, whoa, this looks like my old school. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got, um, I got kind of lost sometimes because when I went to Timnath, there was like one, like there were a couple of staircases and it was on one. Mm -hmm. So I knew which staircase to go to to go upstairs. But we have three different staircases. And so I was confused about which one to yeah. go to. Yeah. So. What's your favorite part of the building? I really, really like the classroom sizes. Yeah. At Timnath, there were so many kids, and <laughs> we had um, the trailers outside, yeah. so we were squished like tiny little spaces. Yeah. So then when I got into our classroom now, it was like huge, and I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I have like elbow space, and yeah. it's <laughs> really yeah. fun. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, I mostly like about it is that there are only two levels. Mm -hmm. There were so many levels at Timnath that, like, it felt, like, kind of scary because there were so many levels. Okay. And, like, I didn't like having to, like, walk up all the staircases. Mm -hmm. And I like that there's only, like, one that you have to walk up. So you like the layout of the building? Yeah. Good. I love it. Good. Good. Well, Dedication Day was such a wonderful event for the community of Timnath. We had a remarkable turnout and it was just a beautiful ceremony. What are your thoughts on Dedication Day as you reflect back from a couple weeks ago? Well, one of the things that uh, uh, surprised me quite a bit actually was we had people who showed up from uh, extended family, mm -hmm. including people who I'd never met before, uh, never people met. who I'd met once, you know, yeah. many years ago from Kansas, from Minnesota, from Wisconsin, um, and that was uh, that was just a surprise that that, that it s sort of had that much uh, had that much interest. But I think it was because my dad. These were people who uh, some of them were cousins or children of cousins of his, and who he knew in his early life, and somehow they uh, they made that connection. And then um, people I knew in high school. Uh, came and you know just uh, it, it, it was it was touching that there were that many people and from so, so many different ways in yeah. which they had known either our dad or, or members mm -hmm. of the family. 
uh, I think the day came together beautifully. Um, you know, from the snow on the high mountains and the crisp, clear day, and uh, the students participating, the choir, and um, it just I, was everything we'd hoped it might be. Um, and again, just the number of people from the community the, mm -hmm. um, and the relatives. Um, it turned into a whole long weekend of celebration for us. Good. And uh, um, so it was just an extremely special occasion. Good. And a very nice day. Well, it's our goal at Bethke to live out your dad's mission of making the world a better place and to create that community that Maddie was talking about that you experienced back in Timnath and to make sure everyone feels welcome and is learning and is part of that bigger community. So thanks for sharing your dad's legacy with us. It's been such a privilege to visit with you all today. This has been Living History. Thank you.